What's up, Uncle Chael? Hey, we need your take on this Conor McGregor, Artem feud that's going on. Who you got in the fight at SBG Gym? What do you think about it overall? And have you seen something like this happen before in your own gym where teammates challenge each other behind closed doors without the bright lights? All right, yeah, that's the topic going around, right? And I gotta tell you, I know a little something about this now. When I say it, I know a little bit about it. I must tell you, I've got a good memory. I don't forget a lot of things. I'll impress my friends from a wrestling match they had when they were nine years old when I will tell them the score of that match. I just got a good memory for it. things that I have heard before, and this one stayed with me. Now, let's back up. Cara, Con Connor and Artem, very good friends. Very good friends to the extent, if you'll remember the night, that Conor McGregor premeditated an assault, and before he got to the assault, he had a hatchet plan to do something called trespass on the Barclay Center. I'm talking about the Dolly, I'm talking about the bus and Khabib and the windows breaking. That was all because the day before a video was released of Khabib slapping one of Conor's friends. Conor loaded up a, a jumbo jet in Ireland and flew in. He was so loyal to his friend who was slapped, that was Artem. Which, by the way, I don't love to tell a story like that. That's the way the story is. I don't think Khabib slapped him. I think Khabib said hello to him. I think that Khabib used his hand and said hello. Some people do that, right? You, and you want to know what the difference is? It's not the contact. It's how long you leave the hand there. A slap, slap's instant, but the removal of the slap is instant. Khabib put his hand here, but he kept it there. He was looking him in the eye like he was trying to talk to him, like he grabbed him and was trying to talk to him. It's different, in my opinion. In my opinion, it is not a slap if it stays there, at any rate. That was Artem. So we just know Artem and Connor are tight, right? Okay. Fast forward the tape. And this is going to take you to about a year ago. And when I, get, when I do this little about dance, I will tell you COVID has thrown me off. I can keep track of years because I follow college wrestling. But when the guys who are sophomores are sophomores again because of the way the rule, I mean, true, this could be two years ago is what I'm trying to tell you, but I still saw the article and I remember it perfectly. Now, I do need to add one thing for you, which is that I know Artem. And the rap that he got online is not who he is, even a tiny bit. Artem is an educated man in the form of economics. And I know that that is a bachelor's degree from an accredited university. It could be a master's degree. I mean, this was a pretty smart guy. This is a multilingual guy, by the way. And his record is no reflection of his, because that used to drive me crazy. People would tease him. He was 15 and 14, or he was 14 and 15. And people would tease him. You go look at the people he fought including the matches he lost and how competitive those matches were. So I'm just sharing an, a little bit other side of Artem. But when this came out, story went like this, and this is from Artem, and this is off of Chael's memory from at least a year ago. And Artem says that they were at the gym, straight blast. They were getting ready to do a training session. And Connor handed him something. And Artem put it in his bag and went out and did the training session. And later, what I picture to be like at home, he remembers the something Connor handed him. He goes and retrieves it. He opens it up. It's a check for a million dollars. So Artem says to Connor, why are you giving me a check for a million dollars? And Artem thought it had to do with MMA. Like Connor was getting ready for something and Artem was a good and loyal sparring partner and training partner. And Connor said, no, it's the, the whiskey thing. So the way this ties back, apparently, Artem told Connor, hey, you should get into the whiskey business. And I could only imagine how that conversation went because Connor got in it, got in on it on the heels of George Clooney getting out, and Clooney got out for like an internationally reported billion dollars. Something to do with alcohol. I don't know the difference between whiskeys and bourbons and right? some guy uses it to get drunk. So I can only imagine that it was something like that where Art probably saw literally the George Clooney thing and turned to Connor and said, hey man, we're in Ireland and Irish whiskey and you're the biggest face in Ireland. Why aren't you attaching yourself to this whiskey brand? Something along these lines and possibly not even to that extent of detail. It was not as though Artem 
laid out the term proper 12 Irish whiskey or laid out a supplier or laid out a recipe or a certain special hops and oats to make it. It wasn't like that. It was a light conversation, to, according to Artem, the way he told it, hey, Connor, you should think about getting in the whiskey business. Great. Connor doesn't say a whole lot back. Connor leaves there, thinks about this for however much time, makes a phone call to Audie. Audie makes a phone call to someone else. Next thing you know, Connor's in the whiskey business. Well, next thing you know, the whiskey business is doing great. And the next thing you know, the whiskey business, just like George Clooney's, is sold. Goes to somebody else, and there's a whole jackpot full of money. And Again, this is off of Chael's mind, and we could simply go to Google and do a search, and it, it would pop up with reported, it was, I want to say $600 million. I want to say that's what Connor and Audie, who ended up being partners, and then worked the next guys in. I want to say $600 million overall. At any rate, when that was all done, Connor came and was like, hey, by the way, thanks, man. Artem didn't accept it. Artem said, no way. This is Artem speaking. Artem's version at the time of this report was no way. You're my friend. You help me. I help you. If I gave you an idea that was a good idea, chalk that against the ones I gave you that weren't great ideas, and off they go as friends. But Artem refused to take the money. Artem either went back to Connor and physically handed him the check, or he tore that damn thing up, and it was something like this. He did not take that money. And I remember seeing that story, and I really was impressed with both guys. One guy's opinion, right? Me, the reader of the article. I remember being so impressed with both guys. And then you follow that rule, put yourself in their shoes. Is that what you would have done? I like to believe, sincerely, if I was in Connor's shoes, that I would have done that. I do not, with sincerity, believe if I was in Artem's shoes, I would have done that. I mean, that was a big belief of my father. My father used to teach that to my sister. It's easy, easy to give a gift. Easy to give a gift. Sometimes it's hard to accept a gift. You have to know how to accept. If somebody gives you something, you, know, you must know how to accept it. How to be gracious, to be appreciative, whether it's the gift you wanted or it's not. You, got, you, you must know how to accept a gift. And that's before you get to the side of greed. My goodness, a million dollars? Thank you, Connor. All right. But that's where tempers were back when this article came to my attention the first time in what I'm disclosing to be a year. All right. Well, that's not where we are anymore. Artemis said, hey, man, I gave you that idea. That germinated with me. None of this happened without me. I germinated this. I am the cause of it. And he's gone back and he's valued the cause of an idea to be worth 5%. And I trust, as Artem, being an intelligent guy, and I'm suspecting that somebody else threw their arms around him and helped to convince him of Connor's wrongdoing, also looked into it and thought the scheduled amount, should you get to a jury for the jurisdiction they're in, is 5%. So this is where we go. So he hasn't made a demand, at least not publicly, of, say, $30 million. I'm saying 5%. I'm also the one that's saying $600 million. But he wants... 5% of whatever it was, and he's decided that's a lot more than a million dollars. Great, this is where we are now. From a legal standpoint, this does get complicated. It, it truly does get complicated because I think the majority of you are gonna see it the exact same way I saw, which is, wow, Connor, that was, a, that was a cool move, man. That was a cool move to bring your buddy a million dollars. The attorneys of Artem can use that very check and they could put a very ind different interpretation, which is Connor knew legally he owes you something. And he also knows that you have three years to make that demand. So if he could come in and get you to accept a million dollars, he's getting you to admit and accept that you were owed a million dollars. That is one way that somebody could look at the check. Now, Connor's team could come in very quickly and say, wait just a sec, forget about your 5%. We had a bargain. We had a straight up bargain of a million dollars and my client paid in full or at least he tried to, right? Like that, that check that was written is going to be one of the most massive pieces of evidence and you're going to have two different opinions about that check. And that ultimately is what you're going to take before the 12 people not smart enough to get out of jury duty. 
Was that check meant to be a very ungenerous payoff? Or was that check meant to be a payment in full based on a verbal bargain of no witnesses and no writing that two people had? It's an interesting question. So how does Connor respond to this? Does he calmly say anything that I just said now? No, nope. Connor publicly went out and tweeted and told Artem to meet me at Straight Blast Gym. We're going to fight it out tonight. We're going to fight for that whole damn lot of it. Every penny you think you're owed is on the line. Just come down here and win this fight. But on the other side of it, if I whip your ass, don't ever bring this up again. Connor does this public. Now, I told you I was going to go to YouTube and I was going to go live. I was trying to get a feed. I got friends out there and I was trying to get somebody to come and give that to me. Which, by the way, would have been worth a million dollars. And by the way, I would not have given it to them. I would have done them a favor down the line. So which one am I? Am I Connor or am I Artem, right? I mean, it's just one of those situations. I don't want it to happen. I really don't want it to happen. And there's some extremely tough spots and there's some extremely glossing over by me because I wasn't there. I have no way to know the actual detail. In my mind, right, the way I told you the story, these are two guys getting ready to spar and, and Artem just mentions this. You should get the whiskey business, right? That In my mind. What if it was more in depth? What if it was more? What if he did say, hey, by the way, and that's really important to do is to throw that in there. Hey, by the way, and I want 10%. I've had people do that to me. And, and every time they do it, they, it's like a text message and they put in like the LOL or they put the laughing emoji. But either way, it's been done. I see, I appreciate it. And I do not do that. I do not then take that idea because I do feel whether you did it with the laughing emoji or not, you want 10%, but I know that you really don't. Because most of the ideas that I get, that I do act on, most of them, I don't come bring them to you guys, but they, they go the other way. They don't work. And I know if I bring that person in an invoice for the 10% of what I lost, take you there, right? It's one of those things, but I, you, you kind of got to honor this code. Here's no Robert De Niro. I'll bring in this one story. But Robert De Niro gets a bad rap from people around Hollywood that see him. And he gets a bad rap because if he goes to a restaurant, he has a person with him. If he goes to a restaurant and the waiter says, would you like some water, sir? De Niro talks to the person. The person then tells the waiter, yes. Or the person tells him no. And that goes on all night long. How do you want your steak? And he has this conversation. Why? I mean, it sounds rude. It sounds like he's a little elitist prick that thinks he's better. No, you want to know what that is? Somebody went up to De Niro one time and gave him an idea. He didn't want it. He wasn't soliciting it. He, he didn't want to hear from this, but this person came up and engaged a conversation, and he engaged back. Two years later, he went and made a movie that resembled the idea that a random person had given him. That person sued him. So it was one of these things where, hey, there is a law. Oh, and by the way, De Niro lost it, just so you know how that goes. If you, if an idea germinates from somebody that then gets expanded... There is a massive legal precedent, no, no matter how lazy it was, no matter how involved it was. Look, I'm not with the Winklevoss boys, quite frankly. Follow those guys all the time. I like them. They seem like nice. They were Olympians. They went and did this stuff for them. I like their ideas in crypto. I'm not with them against Zuckerberg. That was not their idea. They were not partners. I don't agree with that. I don't think that it's right that if Connor had mentioned something, it went out and turned to be a big idea that he gets a percentage. I mean, Artem. That's Chael's opinion. That's street stuff. It's not what the laws say. Laws are pretty clear. And the laws go a little bit further in every single civilized nation in the world, of which Ireland is. You cannot intimidate a witness. If you intimidate a witness, you are going to have damages times three. Connor has now challenged the witness to a fight there's no lawyer in the world worth their salt that's going to go, well, they're just boys. They're just jaha, you know, guys, MMA guys will be MMA guys. No, they're not. He, he, he is now making a claim, and he has now been threatened by a multiple-time world champion publicly. Bodily harm, not to mention the embarrassment. If you're Connor's lawyer right now, you're really hoping that he puts down Twitter.